and here's the new bearing and unlike the old ones they're sealed on both sides. Just a tip when it comes to bearings, if you can get a bearing with this number 6008 RD usually that will match so you don't necessarily have to go to a dealer to buy bearings if you can locate the numbers on your bearings and get exact replacements. Now to install your bearings you can have the yoke sitting up like this so it's on something solid then insert your bearing now I'm going to install the bearing by tapping it with the hammer all around the outer edge. It's absolutely imperative that you do not tap it on the inner part of the bearing because you could damage it. And as you can see it's starting to go in. It's about halfway in and it's a bit hard to hit it now because part of the yoke is there. But I'm going to use a socket. I'm just going to tap it on the outer edge of the bearings only. And when you do this go all the way around so the bearing goes down evenly. So as you can see all the pressure going on the bearing is on the outer part. You'll know you've tapped in the bearing deep enough when there's a groove here left for the seal to go there. And if you flip it over you're going to see that it meets the ridge inside here perfectly. Also I forgot to mention you can add a bit of grease inside here before you insert the bearing. It might make it a bit easier to go in. So now I'm going to grab the spacer that goes there. Make sure you put it there before you install the second bearing. And I'm going to install a bit of grease down there. Also the grease will hold the spacer in place for you. And I'm going to wipe some grease all around the edge where the bearing is going to slide in. Now I'm going to put this on a piece of hardwood like that. I'm going to line up the second bearing. So I'm going to start tapping it down evenly. Make sure you do not tap the inside part of the bearing or you could damage it. I keep repeating that because it's imperative you do that or else you may have to go buy new bearings. And now I'm going to use the socket method like I did on the other one. And again, I'm just tapping the outer part of the bearing. Before you're done tapping the bearing in all the way, you can reach in and line up the spacer with the bearings. Then when you put the hub in, it's going to go in perfectly. And there you go. You have both bearings installed. Now I've heard of people who had a hard time getting their bearings in to stick them in the freezer overnight before they do this because it does shrink the metal a bit then they go in a bit easier. Also I've heard of people heating up the yoke here where the bearings go in so that it expands a bit and that the frozen bearings go in easier as well. I did not do that today because the bearings came out fairly easily and they went in fairly easily. So now I'm going to reinstall the seals. I'm going to install the outer seal. This is the one that faces the wheel and it's the thinner seal like this. I'm just going to line that up perfectly and gently tap all around. I'm also going to use a 2 inch piece of ABS pipe. I've grinded part of it here so that it's smaller. And I'm going to use it to punch the seal back in. There's a lot less chance of damaging your seal using this piece of pipe. So this first seal here is installed. You can see how deep it is and how it meets up with the bearing over here. Now let's do the other side. On this side here you want the yellow part of the seal to go down toward the bearing. And this is why I made the pipe like this because it fits perfectly in there like that. Now I'm going to put a piece of wood on it so it goes down evenly and then tap it. And if the seal's not going in evenly, take off the piece of wood and work your way around the piece of pipe. And this is how you want it to look when the seal is installed. So at this part of the procedure you have all the bearings and the seals installed and you're ready to reinstall all the parts together. Okay before I reassemble this part I'm going to put a bit of grease in there just so all the parts go in a lot smoother. This is the position you want the part to be when you're about to install it. Now some people apply anti-seize on the ball joints. You can do that if you want. It will make it a lot easier when you remove them in the future or you can apply just a bit of bearing grease. 
The first thing I'm going to do is insert the drive shaft through the bearings and I'm going to insert this lower ball joint here in the part. You may have to turn it a bit just to get it down in there. Now I get the upper ball joint installed. Now I'm going to apply a bit of blue Loctite on the bolts for the ball joints. And make sure the ball joint's in as tight as it can and then put the bolt on. And now with the 12 millimeter socket, just tighten it up. I don't have the specs with me today, but all I know is that I'm going to put it on pretty tight. Now I'm going to install the lower ball joint bolt, and again I've applied a bit of blue Loctite on it. Sometimes you have to wiggle the whole thing just to get the bolt to properly catch on the threads. Now I'm going to reinstall the tie rod end, just simply slide it down the hole. You can move the whole part to line it up better. And just reinstall the nut that goes underneath. And don't forget to use the 12 millimeter wrench to lock up the bolt on the tie rod end to tighten up the nut. And you're going to need a 13 millimeter socket for that. Now that the nut's tightened up, make sure to reinstall the cotter pin. So now that all the bolts are on securely, I'm going to reinstall the guard that goes over here. And there's three 10 millimeter bolts that go on. Now I'm going to put a bit more grease on here. And a little bit of grease here on the hub inside. And now you want to line it up in here on the shaft and it's going to go right through the new bearings we just installed. So you may have to wiggle it a bit like this to get it in. And if it's a bit stubborn, you may want to use a rubber mallet. Next, the washer is going to go here and the large 30 millimeter nut. And to tighten up the nut, I am not going to use an impact wrench. I'm just going to use a breaker bar with the socket. And it's going to have to be on there fairly tight. You don't want to go too crazy tightening up these nuts because there are holes through the shaft to put the cotter pin. So you want to line up the holes on the nut to the holes on the shaft and then reinstall your cotter pin. If your cotter pin looks damaged, replace it with a new one. Don't forget to bend the ends. Now I'm going to reinstall the brake caliper. All you need to do now is insert it like this. The two pads will still be inside so you want to get them over the rotor like that. Right in this position over here. And now you want to install the two Allen bolts that hold the caliper on. Now the top bolt for the caliper goes right over here. So you want to line up the caliper to the bolt, bolt it in. And don't forget it's an Allen head. And the second bolt's right down here. So again, you may have to move the caliper to line up the holes, then screw it in. Now tighten up both bolts that hold the caliper on. I do not have the torque specs, but all I know is that it has to be fairly tight. So as far as I can see, everything looks to be on there okay. There's no more play in the hub here. All that's left to do now is to make sure that everything is tight. Double check all your bolts to make sure you did not forget to tighten up any of them. And you can also check the rest of your suspension while you're at it. Another important thing to check are the CV boots on the shafts. If you see grease coming out of them or they're cracked, you should replace them before things get worse. So now I'm just going to reinstall the front wheel. And I'm going to tighten up the nuts by hand with a breaker bar and make sure when you tighten up the wheel that you tighten it up evenly. So tighten this one up, then go down here, then here and there. You may want to just snug them up while it's jacked up and tighten them up when the TV's down on the ground, then the wheel won't want to turn. So now I'll remove my safety support from underneath the ATV. And now I'll just lower the ATV to the ground. Now that the ATV is on the ground, I'm going to tighten up the bolts evenly. And 
And now don't forget to install the little rubber cap. And now you're not going to have any more play inside your wheels. And now that you're done this wheel, just repeat the exact same process on the other side. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.